So welcome back friends to the homestead. I've got a fun video for you today. We're going to build an awesome bunk bed for the sweet loaf using some old Jeep parts. The foundation of our sweet loaf bunk bed is a piece of three quarter inch plywood I got from Home Depot that's pre-finished. This is kind of a, a cheap ripoff version of the Baltic birch, but at a third of the cost. So I'm going to show you a little trick you can use uh, to clean up the ends uh, to get a nice effect uh, for a whole lot less money. Now I needed some bulletproof bomber hinges and I thought about making my own hinges and then I thought about modifying some heavy duty hinges and I really couldn't find anything that I wanted and then it dawned on me what would be more perfect than a Jeep hinge and I had to ha happen to have two or a couple left over. So this is the hinge for the rear tailgate that holds the rear uh, the spare tire color cover. Extra points for anyone that can give me the official color this is. Starts with the C, ends with the D. And then this one here is the is a hood hinge. Uh, these were used on the TJs uh, from what, 97 to 06, and I happen to have three of them left, and I'm just painting them now uh, to match, but this is what I decided on, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Let me bring you up to speed here with what we have so far. So we have the pre-drilled sections here uh, for the three hinges, and those are over on the, the paint table drying. Now what I did is I took a piece of this uh, L track, this L rail that uh, is so, I, I love to use it in the van because it has so many applications and all these little grades, these little clips and things, and it's super versatile. And what I'm doing here is I'm bolting it through uh, with these stainless steel Allen head bolts. Uh, so that will go on there. Now this provides a great a way to not only uh, connect all of the, the webbing, which I'm using some race car webbing, which is on order, be here in a couple days, um, but it will give me a super secure way to connect. Uh, I think I can do that on camera. That I can connect this uh, securely using the net and, and to hang for the hinges, which is, will come up. So what I'm doing right now is I'm putting on the veneer. So one thing about the cheap cheaper plywood is that the edges are kind of ugly. And so I'm using this veneer strip, which is commonly used. It's, it's a good product. I've had really good luck with it. I'm using this veneer strip uh, to finish off the edges so we don't see that unsightly plywood. So this is a corner that I'm just working on right now. I've got the whole front veneered. If you want to take a look at it before, you can see right here, that doesn't look very nice. Can I focus? Now the difference between the $100 a sheet or the $90 a sheet birch, birch bark plywood, the fancy stuff, it means it doesn't, ha it doesn't have any voids in it. Do you see those voids in there? Well, that's, that's what you have to contend with when you get the budget stuff. But we can kind of mitigate that uh, by the veneer strip. So there you can see is the after, the veneer strip on there, and then this here is the before. So I'll show you how to apply this. It's very simple. All you need is a, a utility knife and steal your wife's iron, don't let her know. Uh, and then you can put that right on there and make it look really good. We got that good and hot and melted that down in there. Get a razor, get, put a new blade in. I'll, when you're using, doing this cutting type of stuff, uh, always, the blades are not expensive, put a new blade in and make sure you don't pull up when you're cutting. So we're gonna go along here and we're gonna, we're gonna trim that off there with a downward, pushing downward, not up, like that. I'm gonna put my old man reading glasses on or I'm gonna mess it up there. Here's the finished edge. You can see with the, the veneer strip on there, it, it looks, it just looks a lot better. I mean, it's not perfect, uh, but most folks wouldn't even notice it. When you look at it, it, it looks complete and looks finished nice and uh, put a little a coat of clear on there and we're set. So let's go back over and check our hinges, get the last coat of paint on those and then get everything mounted up. I think you're gonna like the way it, uh, it, it turned out. Whenever I'm painting anything automotive, I, I, what looks best, what matches best is a, is a satin finish. You have, you know, your flats, your satins, your, your high glosses. Uh, the satin matches best, kind of the, it means there's so much plastic and bodywork on there that has that sheen to it. So that's typically uh, what, what you go with. And of course, it's very tempting to put lots of paint on stuff, but multiple light coats 
is always a lot better than uh, big heavy coats that uh, take weeks to dry. Just don't get it in any hurry. Put a half a dozen of them on there if you need to. When you're done with your paint cans, if you don't, don't know this already, turn them upside down, spray until they clear, and that will keep the, that'll clear out the nozzle, so when you want to use it in six months, uh, it won't be clogged up. I decided to put the bunk bed over, right over top of, of the main bed, our bed, uh, at, at uh, right here, on this side, just to the left of the galley. And so uh, what I did is I put the L rail in here, all the way across, it's bolted into the, into the body. There must be 30 screws in there, so it's really strong. Now on the top side, and I, this is what I was intending to do from the get-go, uh, was I put the L rail as well on the ceiling, and, and that was a couple, fold, a couple reasons. That way we can use these to hang uh, the, the, the netting and the uh, supports. This is just a, a temporary one here. We'll have something a little more secure that will hold that up, and then the bed will hinge and fold down out of the way if need be with the netting around it. So also, so there'll be this, there'll be another one of these on this other side. You can see where the screws are there and, and that looks a lot cleaner when you, when you cover up those screws uh, with that L track. On the end here, I'm not gonna run it any further. I don't need it up here and plus it doesn't make the bend very well. Um, I've got these little, finished off with these little caps uh, which kind of clean it up and, and it just looks a lot nicer over here as well, these little, you can get these little plastic caps on there to to clean that up. And there's all sorts of things you can do there. So we're experimenting with hanging some bike panniers. This is just temporary. Um, but these are working out really good. I got these off of Amazon. They were two for 60. And they've got, uh, they're just the size of a grocery bag. And they've got the hooks on the back. I just haven't quite figured out exactly a way to do it. But they're very handy. Uh, we got six of them and we have them all full of things. When you, if you don't need them, then they can easily uh, fold up here like this, and then they've got a snap, and then you can put them away. I forgot to mention, to make this hinge work, you can see that we'll, it will bolt on like this here. Uh, I had to use two different types of clips, and I just actually stumbled upon it accidentally. There's two styles here. These little clips, what they do is that they mount they slide in, you see how it slides, and this one actually captures on the, the two round parts. And when I put two of them on there, they were too far apart to use the Jeep hinge. So I had another style that actually captures on the round side, as you can see there, um, and that worked out perfectly. So it's just providence, I guess sometimes those things, sometimes those things just work out, but that, that there is uh, how it's gonna be. With the three hinges installed, we can, mount up the bed and those hinges are pretty stiff so they should support the weight of here for a second until we can get all of the fasteners in here now we've got a four foot bunk bed that's very very strong hanging on with all my weight these straps are just temporary i just borrowed them from my motorcycle carrier uh, but uh, when I get the race car netting, uh, it's going to be even stronger. You'll see that it, I, I ran no risk for uh, the sweet loaf getting into harm. Um, yes, it's uh, some people pointed out it's only four feet long. Uh, yeah, that, that, that'll last her until she's three or four or so. Uh, so uh, that's fine. You know, things change. I, I, I need something um, now to get her up off of the floor and have that big pack and play thing, it just didn't work out at all. So if we want to, we can hang it, or we can put it down uh, here, it'll fold down, I can put a latch on it. We could even, uh, if we wanted to, we could we could store it in the upward position up here too, which is over the bed. So it doesn't, it doesn't really uh, make that much difference. I think in all honesty, I don't think it's ever gonna come down uh, because uh, with the netting on it and there'll be an opening those little things are fussy sometimes. With an, with, is that right? No. There we go. With the netting on here, uh, and there'll be an opening right here, it's gonna be a fabulous storage when we don't, when, when she's not sleeping up here, just to get stuff out of the way. Here's a little different perspective uh, on how uh, this is gonna work. So that, so what I found for race car netting, I'm talking about race car netting, um, I, I needed something that was uh, 12 inches tall, um, 
this is a little bit more than that, 12 inches tall and eight feet long. And it just so happens that, that there's a company making these, these nets that go over wheelie bars for to protect, to keep the parachute for dragsters out of the wheelie bar. That's perfect. They're 24 inches. Uh, 48 inches long by 12 inches, um, and it's it's really good high quality netting. I was looking at those cheap, you know, that stretchy type of cargo netting like you get at Harbor Freight, and I, I kept, I couldn't think of an instance where she would get into trouble or get tangled in that or it would fail because, it you know, it's made in China. It's not very good. Um, but it was, what it worried me was the things I couldn't think of. Um, you know, I don't know if some a kid could, kid could get in those and get strangled or whatever. So I'm like, no, I don't think I want to do that. I just don't trust that stuff. So I found a USA made, you know, proper web webbing, you know, box stitch, you know, really nice. So that will be here in a couple of days and that will, that will tie in here to all these D rings. It'll go around. I'll have to figure out some sort of an opening here where we can install the loaf as Mrs. W uh, puts it, but she'll be able to sleep up here securely and we'll have aw an awesome place for storage um ski boots you know all that stuff that we just packed in, in there so i don't i don't see it coming down this will be underneath our feet in our bed we still have uh, plenty of room i have uh, i'm gonna bring you down here i i determined kind of determined the height uh so that when i have the top on here we can still use this as a bench we can still sit here um uh well if we don't have the bed in here so it's not it's not a problem um, so that's, that's kind of was my rationale, my thinking. So I will, uh, oh, one last thing I wanted to show you. The thing that determined the size for, uh, for her bed was the, uh, her, this thermorest. This is a thermorest that fits in the bottom. We have this little portable pack and play deal that we put up, uh, like we were on the beach when she wants, to, she needs to take a nap. Uh, so this was, um, what, 20, 19 and a half by... 20 almost 48 46 inches or something like that so i just made it 22 and a half by 44 48 um so we can put this up here she can sleep on it uh we can take it out we can put it in her deal so it kind of plays it's it's two rolls so that's it that that's my invention and uh that's what i came up with so we'll do one more part or just quickly when i get the the netting when it's all finished up we'll install her and see how it works but i think it's going to be uh it's just going to be fabulous mm -hmm.